LA Metro is adding new safety measures to its trains and buses. In response to a recent KTLA investigation, they've given our Annie Rose Ramos exclusive access to their new plans and initiatives to make riders feel safe. She joins us live now outside of Westlake MacArthur Park Station with more on that. Annie Rose, good morning. Jessica, just in the past few moments, there was a flurry activity arriving here. First responders arriving here to this station, the LAPD confirming to us that there was an overdose inside the elevator at the station that you see behind me. Luckily, police were able to respond and minister Narcan and that man is fortunately OK and was revived. This is a station that has had the history of having the most violence, the most instances of drug use, and that is why the LA Metro bringing us in for an exclusive look of what they're doing to make it safer. As you get off the train, immediately brighter station. Look up here at some of the lights that go down here. Um, these have been replaced. The older fluorescent lights have been replaced by brighter LED uh, lights. Changes are being made to Metro's Westlake MacArthur Park Station where more crimes are committed here than at any other. This is the station where oftentimes it has a reputation of not being safe. So you had a huge challenge here. Had a huge challenge, and exactly. Last February, 113 crimes were reported at this station. During a two-month period last summer, there was nearly one call made every day to the police. We're really committed to making sure that the people who actually live and use the station in this area are able to safely use it. Stephen Two is in charge of the changes, starting with the station's entrances. It had two, but now they've blocked one of them off. Passengers funnel to these officers who make sure everyone is a paying customer. People who were inappropriately using our station did not have valid fare. Another change playing classical music. One of the reasons that we put this music on is actually to be able to keep people moving through the station. Recent Metro report photos show officers inspecting the station and finding people living in the corridors, leaving trash, drugs and human waste along with condoms and syringes. We were seeing drug use. Um, we were seeing people that were laying down who were experiencing crisis. And now we've been able to really cut down a lot on that. In addition to lighting and music, air is now blowing on the platform. All of those grills right there are actually our strong ventilation fan. Someone who maybe was doing drugs here before, if you feel there's a breeze, um, you're, you're, yeah, you're not going to necessarily want to sit here. Outside the station, changes here too. A Skywatch unit, more lighting and fencing. If you are in this station and you're not using it for transportation, if you're doing drugs, if you're having a mental health crisis, you're not getting better because we don't have the capability to be able to help someone get better, but we can partner. Partners like this health clinic in the station's parking lot. We bring uh, physician, nurses, social workers, uh, substance use counselors. Uh, we even have a psychiatrist and a pharmacist. But it's only here one one day every other week. Metro's Craig Joyce is in charge of setting up these partnerships. We have people who are utili utilizing our system for shelter. If we don't recognize that and address that, then we're not being a part of the solution. Yet transit security officer Nathan Romero says there still aren't enough solutions for the mental health crisis impacting the Metro. Getting them resources, finding them where they can go, offer them somewhere they can go. Because it, it's hard to just say, hey, get off the train or get off the bus and then just sit on the bench because then they'll just be back in 20 minutes. Do you see them come back? Yes, definitely. Hi, ma'am. Thank you for choosing Metro. Another Another part of the Metro's multi-layer approach to safety is their ambassador program. It started at Westlake MacArthur, but has since expanded to over 300 ambassadors on the entire transit system. Shadea Stewart is one of them. Generally, we have a lot of people out here, like they may um, exhibit signs of aggression. They're throwing things around. They're like uh, verbally like agitated. They're, they're speaking to themselves. They're moving erratically. During our interview, a man you see there on your screen pushing a cart and speaking to himself approaches the two of us. Security officers then escort him away. How often are you monitoring someone like that versus actually helping the passengers? Uh, uh, thankfully, uh, we're mostly helping the passengers. So I can honestly say that usually these situations are just visually uncomfortable, but all in all, it, exactly. So the safety uh, issue is not really 
an issue. Ambassadors are not armed, have no security training, but they have all been trained in using Narcan. I did chest compressions and I administered Narcan. Three days after getting trained, Yesenia Chavez used her Narcan on a woman at the North Hollywood station. She was unconscious. She was, her lips were bluish, um, her, the fingertips uh, were a little bit uh, cold. I checked her pulse, there was no pulse. 22 people have died on Metro buses and trains so far this year, mostly from suspected overdoses. That's more deaths than in all of last year. When you got into this program, did you know that you would be doing something like this, life-saving measures? Or did you think you were just going to be waving to people and helping people with maps? The riders need our help. It's all about letting them, the riders feel safe, letting the riders connect from one station to another station and it's just making them feel that we're there to support them. Metro says reports of drug use are down across their entire transit system, including right here at this station. The change is being made here at Westlake MacArthur Park Station, all part of a pilot program the Metro tells me could be expanded to other stations. Reporting live, Annie Rose Ramos sending it back to you both in the studio. Annie Rose, thank you very much for your reporting on that.